Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to section 6.5, Operations with Radical Expressions. We're going to start things off right away by simplifying. And please remember back to nth roots here with 1 through 4. This square here has a 2, so we're going to use perfect square. So the first thing we're going to do here, what's a perfect square that goes into 32? That's going to be 16. 16 times 2 is 32, and then x to the Eighth, that all that's under the square root. The square root of 16 is 4. Now also, how many times does this 2 go into that 8? That is 4 times. So I'm going to bring out that x to the 4 because 8 divided by 2 is 4 without a remainder. But what do we still have left inside? That is going to be a 2, the square root of 2. Then move, And that is the simplified answer for number 1. Then moving on to 2, same situation. What's the square root of 25? The square root of 25 is 5. Now there is an implied 2 here. How many times does that 2 go into that 4? Well, 4 divided by 2 is 2, so it's a squared. How many times does that 2 go into that 9? Well, we have b to the, that 2 goes in there 4 times. Now, it goes in there 4 times. How many b's will be left inside the square root? Only 1b is left inside, and this is the simplified answer for number 2. Now with 3, now we're moving on to cube roots. So with cube roots, it's the same thing as nth roots. The cube root of 125 is going to be 5. How many times does that 3 go into 30? Well, it goes in there 10 times. How many times does this 3 go into 20? That goes in there 6 times, right? p to the 6th. Now, how many are still left inside that square root? It's going to be p squared because 3 times 6 is 18, leaving 2 extra exponents left over. Same thing with 4. Cube root of 27 is 3. This 3 goes into 12 how many times? 4 times, so it's going to be y to the 4th. This 3 goes into 7 how many times? It goes in there once. Or, I'm sorry, twice, so it's going to be z squared. But how many are going to be left over? It's just going to be 1z. But please remember that we have to include that cube root on top of that radical sign and same situation over there. And this is your simplified answer. Number five, now we're asked to simplify each expression again. When we have a square root, or when we have a fraction inside a square root, that square root just has to go to the top and bottom. So we have a square root on top, then we have a square root on bottom. Now we square root both things on top and on bottom. On top, we simplify it. What's a perfect square that goes into 27? That's going to be 9. And the square root of 4 is 2. We take out the 9, it turns into a 3, square root 3, all over 2. Awesome for our simplified answer. Now with number 8, same situation, but... When we simplify it, it's going to be square root 9 over the square root of 8. Let's keep rocking with this. The square root of 9 is 3. That's awesome. But now it's going to be the square root 4 times 2 on the bottom. We didn't get completely get rid of that square root, did we? Because it's going to be 3 over. That 4 comes out. It turns into a 2 square root 2. Notice how we still have a square root on the bottom of a fraction. Ladies and gentlemen, we cannot have a square root on the bottom of a fraction. When we do have a square root on the bottom of a fraction, we have to multiply it top and bottom, top and bottom by the square root of 2. So on top, we have 3 square root 2. On the bottom, we have 2 times the square root of 4. Do you agree? Because it's square root of 2 times the square root of 2. The square root of 4 turns into a 2. So now it's 2 times 2 on the bottom, which turns into a 4. And on top, it's still 3 square root 2. So now our simplified answer is 3 square root 2 over 4. And what we just did has a special name, and that is rationalizing the denominator. We rationalize the denominator by multiplying by the square root of 2, both top and bottom. Remember, it's a lot like i's of complex numbers. We cannot have i's on the bottom of fractions. Moving to 7. Let's simplify again. We have a square here and a 2 here. So how many times does that 2 go into 9? It goes in there 4 times. So it's a to the 4th and times the square root of a. That's going to go over. How many times does that 2 go into 5? 
It's twice, so it's b squared times the square root of b. Now, can we have a square root on the bottom? No, we cannot. We cannot have this square root on the bottom, so we have to multiply by the square root of b on top and bottom. So now, on top, we have a to the fourth times the square root of a, b, and that's going to be all over b squared times the square root of b squared. The square root of b squared turns into a b, correct? So on top we still have a to the fourth times the square root of a b, and that is all over b squared times a b is b to the third for our final answer. How about with 8? Eight? 8. Now we have two fractions being multiplied together. With fractions, what do we have to do? We have to multiply across the top and across the bottom. So 3 times 4 is 12. So it's going to be 12 over 20. Now let's carry that square root to the top and bottom. So the square root of 12 and the square root of 20. Let's simplify. What's a perfect square that goes into 12? That's going to be 4 times 3. And a perfect square that goes into 20, that's going to be 4 as well times 5. Both of those 4's come out and turn into a 2 times the square root of 3 and 2 times the square root of 5. Can we have a square root on the bottom of a fraction, ladies and gentlemen? We cannot have a square root on the bottom of a fraction. So how do we do, get rid of that? We rationalize by multiplying by the square root of 5. So on top now, remember we can only multiply the square roots times square roots. So it's going to be 2 times the square root of 15 all over 2 times the square root of 25. The square root of 25 turns into 5, so on top we have 2 square root 15 all over 10, because it's 2 times 5, which is 10. Now this would be a good enough answer for me, but um, can we go just a little bit farther? Well, can we take anything out of the 2 and the 10? Yes, we can. We can take out a 2, so if we take out a 2, that's going to be we're left with a 1 here of 5 there, so it's going to be the square root of 15 over 5. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I know what you might be thinking, that we can divide that 5 into the 15, but is that really a 15? It is not. It is the square root of 15, so it's not really a 15. It's a, different, it's a decimal number that does not end, so we really can't divide that 15 by 5. Let's keep going. With number 9, now we have some numbers outside the square roots and inside. When this happens, we can only multiply the numbers outside and then the numbers inside. So let's take 2 times 4, which is 8, and then inside the square root, we have the square root of 3 times 6, which is 18, and then a to the 4th times a, which is a, or a to the 4th times a, which is a to the 4th. Let's simplify this. Here we have 8 times the square root. What's a perfect square that goes into 18? That's going to be 2 times 9. 9 is a perfect square. a to the 4th. We take the 9 out. It turns into a 3. So 8 times 3 is 24. Can we take this a to the 4th out? 2 goes in there 2 times. So it's a squared times the square root of 2 for our final answer. Now with 10, ladies and gentlemen, Notice how we have a cube root and a cube root. We can only multiply radicals with the same root. So since we have the same roots here and here, we can go ahead and multiply them together. It's just like there's a 1 here, so it's 5. And then the cube root of, when we multiply this and this together, we get 1,000 a cubed. Let's go ahead and simplify. We have the 1,000 comes out of the cube root and turns into a 10. And then 3 goes into 3. How many times? Once. So the a cube comes out and turns into an a. But now what do we have to do with this 5 and the 10? We have to multiply it, so it's going to be 50a. Now for 11. 
here we have 6 square root 5 plus 2 square root 5 minus 5 square root 5. Well, what do we do with all those square roots of 5s? What we do with them is treat them just like this guy here. We treat them like like terms. Notice how we have an x plus an x plus an x. So we'd have 8x minus 5x. We simplify for 3x. That's all we do with the square roots. We treat them like like terms. So if they're the same square root, we can treat them like they are like terms. So we have all like terms here, here, and here. So 6 plus 2 is 8 square root 5 minus 5 square root 5. Simplifying to get 3 square root 5 for your final answer. 12, same situation, but now we have a couple different square roots where those guys would be like terms, and here and here would be like terms. So for the square root of 3, we have 4 square root 3, and then for the blue, the square root of 5, we have a minus 8 square root 5, and that is your final answer. We cannot go any further than that because we have two different square roots. For 13, now we have different square roots, but can we simplify to find the same square root? Well, it's a perfect square that goes into 27, 12, and 75. Well, we for 27, it's going to be 9 times 3. For 12, it's going to be 4 times 3. And then for 75, it's going to be 25 times 3. So now the 9 turns into a 3, right, when you pull it out. So it's uh, 6 times 3, which is 18 times the square root of 3. The 4 turns into a 2, so it's 8 times 2, which is 16 times the square root of 3. And then the five, 25 comes out and turns into a 5, so it's 2 times 5, which is 10 square root 3. Notice how they all have the same square root. So we combine all of these guys to be 44 square root 3. With 14, now we have uh, two binomials, basically, that we are multiplying together. All we have to use is use FOIL. Remember that we have uh, real numbers and square roots. We're going to take it times there and times there. So we get 10 square root 20 minus 25 square root 2. And now we move on to the next guy. This times there to give us plus 6 square root 50, and then minus here times there to give us 15 square root 5. Now let's simplify. Here we have 10 square root. What's a perfect square that goes into 24 times 5? And then minus 25 times the square root of 2, and then it's going to be plus 6 times what? The square root of 25 times 2, because 25 is a perfect square that goes into 50, and then minus 15 square root 5. So, cleaning up this mess, the 4 turns into a 2, so it's 10 times 2, which is 20, square root 5, bringing down the minus 25, square root 2. The 25 turns into a 5, so it's going to be 6 times 5, which is 30, so it's going to be plus 30, square root 2. 2, and then minus 15 square root 5. Simplifying this mess here and here, turn into 5 square root 5, and then here and here turn into plus 5 square root 5. Now with 15, ladies and gentlemen, yes, we have a square root in the bottom, but what happens? We cannot just multiply by the square root of 5 because of this plus. So what we have to do, ladies and gentlemen, is multiply by the same exact thing, but we have to change the sign in the middle. Notice how I'm changing the sign in the middle. So I'm multiplying by 4 minus the square root of 5 on top and bottom. We distribute on top to get 4 square root 2 minus the square root of 10 on top. Then on bottom, watch the magic happen. Here we have 4 times 4, which is 16. Then it's minus. 4 square root 5 plus 4 square root 5. And then it's going to be minus the square root of 25. Now can we cancel out some things here? Yes, both in the middle are gone. 
square root of 25 turns into 5. So now, on top, we have 4 square root 2 minus square root 10, and that's going to be 16 minus 5 to be 11 for our final answer. And notice this when this will always happen. Take a peek. Good day.